Government College Jumahia, also known as GCU, some call it Eaton of the East, is a prestigious secondary school located in Umahia, Abia State, Nigeria. It was founded in 1929 by Reverend Robert Fisher and has a long history of academic excellence and producing notable alumni. The old boys of GCU have embarked on a, have embarked on a restoration project set out to restore the school as a citadel of excellence and ensure its good management and funding in a sustainable way. In September 2022, GCU opened its doors to a new generation of young minds. In October 2022, the Fisher Educational Development Trust appointed a six-person investment committee comprising old boys, Mr. Uchi Oji as chairman, Mr. Nele Ibizie, Mr. Chukwe Mekai Fizulike, Dr. Emmanuel Okafo, Mr. Enye Kanu, Mr. Reginald Moma, and Mr. Charles Uwakaneme and Mr. Reginald Ihijiai. Committee comprising old boys who possess their experience and knowledge in the field. The endowment fund has been scheduled to be launched virtually on Saturday, the 5th of August, 2023. This virtual launch promises to be a momentous occasion with the governor of Abia State, Alex Oti, attending as a guest of honor. Joining us now is Okechuku Enelama, founder and the chairman of African Capital Alliance, who attended the school in 1974. Oke Enelama also served as Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment Miti for the federal government of Nigeria between 2015 and 2019. He will be joined from Spain by Dr. Charles Uwakaneme, also an old boy of GCU Umaya and founder of Uwakaneme Community Education Project. You, sir. Welcome to the morning show. Mr. Nelema and uh, Dr. Wakaneme, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Well, uh, let's start by you, uh, Mr. Nelema, who is with us in the studio, uh, telling us more about your school. I know this is the school of Chino Achebe, the school of Christopher Okibo, the school of uh, Gabriel Okara, the school of uh, uh, Ben Enwomo, the school of, I mean, so many greats who have uh, passed through that school. Tell us more about the school and its uh, uh, current state and why this endowment fund is so important. Thank you very much. And um, <clears throat> I'm glad you've done a, a very good introduction of the school. And, you know, in addition to the great names you mentioned, what's amazing about Government College Umaha is that it produced a generation of leaders starting from the 30s to the 40s to the 50s, pre-war, and even after the war, I went there in 1974, for instance. And there is no field of, really, human endeavor of significance where you require um, education and leadership that the school has not impacted in the country. That's why it was called the Eating of the East, much like what the Eating has done in the UK as well. And unfortunately, um, particularly after the Civil War, the school deteriorated, and the old boys you know, have been committed to wanting to take it over, realizing that education, you know, has suffered in general, like not just the school alone. And that's what led to um, an agreement that we reached with the Abia State government in 2014, 2015, um, to take over the school. And we're happy to report that having taken over the school, we spent over 2 billion naira and counting, rebuilding it. And what we're doing today, of course, is to take that journey further, having reopened the school, and um, you know, have a new generation of students attend, as you said. Some of the pictures you are seeing are um, the, um, the pictures of the new school. Of course, you showed the pictures of the, how uh, dilapidated it was prior to our takeover. All right, let me come to Dr. Wakenemi now. Dr. Bati introduced by talking about some of the greats that have passed through um, GCU. Great Chino Achebe, uh, Mr. Oke Nelama seated with us here. We have one of our very own Arise um, greats in Demogo, and of course yourself, Dr. Wakeneme, um, shining the light of GCU. Could you share some more information about some of these prominent individuals who graduate, graduated from the school, an opportunity to really blow the horn of GCU as the eaten of the East, as has been described? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, GCU uh, was and will be um, an elite uh, school uh, within within Nigeria, but not an elitist school. We we must emphasize that because during the before the war, 
um, a lot of people came from all over Africa to attend the school. And we produced an incredible amount of um, uh, luminaries, such as Chinua Sebas, which we mentioned. There's uh, Ken C. Uh, Harrison, uh, who is the Emeritus Professor of uh, Obstetric and Gynecology, University of Port Harcourt. Um, Ken Sarawiwa, who we all know as a writer and, and thinker and uh, very, very, very ag aggressive and, and uh, known, well known activist. Lazarus uh, Ifueme, um, musician, uh, musicologist, and professor of music. Uh, <clears throat> but more importantly, this school produced these people through a number of values which we must uh, reinstate in the school. So it's not just the infrastructure of the school that's important, it's also the values of the school. Uh, at the time I was there, I had uh, the son of the president in the 60s as my classmate. I don't think that happens these days. And we, we must return to those particular values again, value of humility and respect, value of uh, discipline, which produced all these luminaries, values of uh, resilience, values of honesty, compassion, and courage to say what you, you believe in and stick to what you believe in. So Government College of Mwahe is not just an academic institution of excellence, it also has been uh, an extraordinary school where extracurricular activities and sports has been at the top of its league. So being an Eton of the East is not just for academic reasons, but we produce enormous number of um, extremely useful uh, individuals from Nigeria. All right. Uh, so the war has a significant impact on the um, on the school. You know, living in the state of devastation. How did the old boys, you know, come together and address this and embark on this restoration project after the war? Thank you. So, right after the war, um, first the founder of the school, Robert Fisher, who had gone back to the UK, actually sent, you know, really whatever money that was left in his estate you know, to contribute to rebuilding the school, which was very moving for a lot of people. And the old boys right from then started a journey of trying to play a more active role in taking over the school. But as you know, schools were handed back to the governments of the day. And that journey took, you know, all of 30 years plus to eventually reach an agreement with the government that the best way to um, restore, restore the school to its former glory would be to establish a trust, a public trust, you know, that will be funded and established by the old boys with a view to then running the school as an independent school, obviously um, um, through this trust as the, as the, as the oversight um, trust. And that's what was done in 2015. So the trust was set up and the old boys have been funding the school and that's how come the pictures you are showing of the rebuilt infrastructure like um, uh, Charles Wakaneme said, it's not just about the infrastructure, but we've now reopened the school to students um, you know, last year in, in 2022, and we're going to take the next set of students in 2023. And the endowment fund, of course, is to make sure that that funding continues in a sustainable manner. But we're happy to report that the school is now managed by a trust, Fed, uh, Fisher Educational Development Trust. Well, it's inspiring to hear about the Fisher Educational uh, development trust and the role is playing in taking over the operations. But what was the process like and how did this trust contribute to the school's revival? I think the most important thing is that the old boys took the view, and I believe it's a correct view because this is a view that I think or a model that I would think can be repeated by other great schools or formerly great schools, that unless you had um, um, independence management and independent funding, it would be difficult just to continue to rely on government alone to fund the school. You know, so the most important thing was that negotiation or that discussion with the government of the day. Um, you know, at the time, it was TLG, who was the governor of Abia State at the time, the government of the day, to accept and trust that by putting the school in this trust as an asset, you know, managed by this trust, that it will make the difference. And of course, they did their due diligence and concluded that like these old boys were truly not only reputable, but had the integrity. And everything we've said we'll do, we've done. We've set it up, 
Um, and um, that trust having been established, we've been funding it as old boys. And now we're setting up this endowment fund to actually open up the model because we want to invite others who are interested in education to fund not only this endowment fund, but similar um, institutions that may be going on that people would like to do in other parts of Nigeria as well. Excellent. Um, Dr. Walken, I mean, let me bring you into this conversation. Looking at the pictures being shown, you would see the incredible restoration project. It's truly remarkable, the transformation pictures. Could you highlight some of the major achievements and milestones that the project accomplished during its journey towards renewal? Well, the funding was done uh, by most of the uh, old boys, really a global family of old boys who came together to, to produce, the, to, to donate the money for the funding. And we built dormitories, new dormitories, classrooms, libraries, dining rooms, and uh, li you know, laboratories. Even a dispensary has been put in place, and all the, all the equipment, the modern equipment, computers, etc., have been established and put in, in the school. I must add to what uh, Dr. Lenama mentioned about uh, the role of government and the role of the individual old boys and uh, the independence that we need to be able to run the school efficiently. It is important that, nevertheless, it's important that government should play a part in creating an enabling environment in which a school of this stature can survive and, and flourish. Um, no school, however um, uh, well established internally it is, uh, can survive in an environment of chaos. So we, we definitely need uh, a, a strong security within the, the community and the state and Nigeria as a whole. We need access roads, we need utilities to be in place, electricity, etc., and water. And these things we are currently funding within the school, but that is not the way it should be. There should be a role for government to create an enabling environment for the schools to thrive and flourish. Well, I think uh, we'll go to a point where we need to thank both of you very much. I <laughs> wish you all the best. Thank you. Um, we've run out of time. Otherwise, I would have loved to know whether the school will be charging fees, if we can quickly address that, and whether the fees will be different from the fees that will be charged by the state government. Yes, the ordinarily. Fee. Yes, so there will be fees, but having said that, the goal is to have scholarships for merit um, students, students who merit scholarships, and also to make sure that those fees are, you know, um, very much supplemented and I would say um, um, helped. Because if you look at the total cost of running a proper school today, privately. You know, it will run into millions. But right now, we're trying to make sure that the fee is well below that. And uh, more importantly, this endowment fund, which is why it's being set up, can fund the school to that quality of excellence, that eating of the East, sustainably, without relying on whatever fees we're able to charge. But clearly, you want also the parents to contribute to training their, their, their children. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, thank you. Mr. Okio Enelama. It's been such a great pleasure having you with us in the studio and linking up with Dr. Uwakeneme virtually to discuss the great GUC and efforts towards renewal and hopefully and the launch of the endowment fund. All the best for Friday, for Saturday.